News of the coronation is now coming thick and fast. The order of service has now been released, and I'll give you my initial thoughts on that tomorrow. One of the items of news we have heard in the last few days is of the robes that the king and queen will wear to the coronation next week. I speculated in my video about the pages some weeks ago that I wondered if new robes might be produced that were lighter and dispensed with the fur, but I was completely wrong. The young boys are going to have to handle really heavy robes. Because the king and queen will wear the traditional style of velvet robes trimmed with gold lace and with fur. They have made the very sensible and economical decision to primarily reuse older garments for their coronation. Now aside for the imperial robes that the king dons at his investiture, I have a video about that if you've not seen it already, the king and queen will wear two different matching robes. One when they arrive at the Abbey, and the other when they leave. Confusingly, these different robes have near identical names. The arrival robe is called the Robe of State, and the robe at the departure is the Robe of Estate. What's the difference? Well, primarily their colour. The Robe of State, which is also known as the Parliamentary Robe, as it is the robe kings and queens wear in Parliament, usually now confined to state openings of Parliament, is made of crimson velvet. It has an 18 foot long train and is decorated with strips of gold called gold lace. It is trimmed with miniver and is lined and has a cape of ermine. The robe of state of the King and Queen is identical in material and decoration, but not in design. That for the Queen hangs on the shoulders and does not cover the front of the body like that of the king. Now, the design of these robes dates back to the 17th century. The robe of estate, also known as the coronation robe, is made of imperial purple velvet. It is only worn once at the coronation itself for the departure from the abbey, for the procession back to the palace and at the balcony appearances. If you want to know why purple is worn at this point, watch my video on what the king will wear at the coronation, as I go into that in excruciating detail. The king's robe of estate, apart from the colour, is identical in form and in decoration to the robe of estate, with strips of gold lace, miniver and ermine. The robe of estate of a queen also follows the same shape as her robe of estate, hanging from the shoulder, and the robe of a state used by a queen regnant and a queen consort is identical in form. So, what robes are going to be worn next week? I understand that the king and queen will both arrive in crimson robes of state, and they will leave in purple robes of a state. That is a change of precedent in itself, as traditionally the queen consort wears her robe of a state for the whole service arriving in it. The king has chosen to wear the robes that were made for his grandfather, King George VI, in 1937 by the robe makers Eden Ravenscroft, and these have been refurbished by the Royal School of Needlework. These robes are nearly 90 years old, and the robe of state was used quite a lot by King George VI, and I suspect significant repairs are needed. I'm really surprised the fur has lasted so long. In these photos released this week, you can see the Conservatives working on the robe of state. Notice how dull the gold of the gold lace appears around the edges of the train. This photo from 1948 shows King George VI wearing this very robe as he opens the Canadian Parliament. So that gives you a good impression of how King Charles will appear in six days' time. The gold lace in 1948 is looking very bright. Hopefully something can be done to freshen it up in time for next Saturday. The King will also wear the purple robe of estate of his grandfather, which you can see King George VI wearing in his coronation portrait. No doubt it needs work too. It is reported that the silk velvet needs repair. And notice that the King George VI in this painting is wearing underneath his robe a purple surcoat to match the colour of the robe itself. 
Queen Camilla is going to wear the crimson robe of state of her mother-in-law, the late Queen Elizabeth II, which was made for her coronation in 1953. Even up to the last few years, this robe has been a working garment and has no doubt been kept in good order. It is the robe that Queen Elizabeth II wore annually for the state opening of Parliament throughout her reign. As I said, it might surprise you that the state robe of a Queen Regnant and a Queen Consort are identical in every way, but that has always been the case. The robe of a Queen is simply a female version of that of the King, and there is no concession to the difference in status. The purple robe of a state of a Queen is the one that differs from that of the King. Whether Regnant or Consort, the robe of a state of a Queen is more lavish than that of of the king. Up on your screen you will see the trains of the robes of the state of Queen Consort Elizabeth Bowes Lyon and her daughter Queen Regnant Elizabeth II. The edges of the train do not have the gold lace that decorates the king's uh, robe of estate but are rather decorated with gold work embroidery, often of flowers. In the case of the late Queen's robe the flowers are those uh, associated with the various constituent nations of Britain and her dominion. In the centre at the back, where it is most visible, is always placed the cipher of the Queen. And the only new robe being made afresh for the coronation this year is the robe of estate for Queen Camilla, because of its complexity. Her robe has been made by the Royal Robe Makers Eden Ravenscroft and has been decorated with gold embroidery by the Royal School of Needlework based at Hampton Court Palace. Uh, Royal Cipher, the conjoined letters CR for Camilla Regina, are also being worked and will take their traditional place in the centre of the back of the train. The embroidery has been chosen by the Queen herself, and as well as the national floral emblems of the United Kingdom, the rose, the thistle, the shamrock, the daffodil, the flowers also reference the King and Queen's love of nature and of gardening, and include flowers with personal associations. These include Lily of the Valley which featured in Her Majesty's Wedding Bouquet and was also a favourite flower of Queen Elizabeth II, Myrtle which represents hope and Delphiniums which are one of the King's favourite flowers and the birth flower of July, the birth month of the Queen. Also featured is Alcamilla Mollis known as Lady's Mantle which symbolises love and comfort Maidenhair fern, which symbolises purity, and cornflowers, which represent love and tenderness. Apparently some other wildlife is embroidered on the robe too, including bees, and somewhere there's even a beetle. It will be quite wonderful. So all told, I'm very pleased indeed. The, the reuse of robes, where that can be done, seems very sensible given the present financial context, and for good sound environmental reasons, but it will also be a joy to see the skills of the Royal School of Needlework on display too. Thanks very much for watching. I've decided to publish a special coronation issue of the Anticrew magazine. This is an addition to the general monthly issue. I have a large collection of really interesting old photographs that I've been collecting over the years of the coronations of George V, George VI and Elizabeth II. And to celebrate the King's coronation in May, this issue will be a special album looking back at the coronations of the 20th century. There is a link in the description and above to the website where you can pre-order a copy before the publishing date in early May.